you can choose between two different demos. One has more focus on vehicle combat, high octane, fast paced physical vehicle combat. The other one is more about melee combat. This one doesn't have too much hand to hand combat. Uh, but in this one, um, you are going to start off by uh, capturing or, or upgrading your Magnum Opus. Your Magnum Opus is your signature vehicle. Sure. And at the start of the game, Max gets taken down by Scrotus and his henchmen, his war boys. Scabra Scrotus is like a warlord around the gas town area of this world. Totally evil, uh, power hungry, treacherous and so on. Mm. So he leaves Max for dead, strips him of his famous interceptor, which like the fans will be distraught to hear. You yeah, don't... I'm distraught hearing that right now. There you go. Uh, so it's part of the story. Loses the interceptor, left for dead. Yeah, should really probably die. But <laughs> He's Mad Max. He's Mad Max. Yeah, I mean, die. Yeah. The ultimate survivor uh, right. enlists the help from some of some companions in the game, and then gradually your journey throughout the game is to build an even better Wasteland War Machine. Oh, man. And every player will uh, choose to customize and look for different parts and enlist the help of different people in the Wasteland and will ultimately produce a vehicle that's unique to them. Wow, so... How much of, like it seems like there's so many elements in this game. It looks I see, like RPG elements, inventory elements, and like action, driving. So like, how do you want to balance how like how how do you want this to feel to play for players? Yeah, well, um, it's an avalanche game. So first and foremost, one of our main characters is always the world. Right. So we started off by um, taking uh, a location around Gastown. It's Gastown is an oil refinery. It's got pipes leading out to oil rigs, which are situated in the sea. So it's a seabed. There's actually a volcano underneath the sea. Uh, harbour wall, industrial region servicing the, uh, the gas town refinery. There's an airport, there's a financial district and so on. And then we threw the apocalypse at it. We just <laughs> teared, it all, teared it all down on concept, on paperwork. And that's really how we got you know, something that should feel authentic. Now, you won't see that when you jump into the game first. But if you pay attention, if you really spend time exploring, you'll see telltale signs all the time, like sewer entrances, signs of you know an old disused subway, uh, churches, and so on. And if you really are, are prepared to invest, you'll you'll uncover some of these lost treasures. That's great. I love that ability to just kind of go around and explore and just find these like hidden treasures and just like other events. Yeah, yeah I was just going to ask. So whenever you're playing the game, can you just instead of if you don't want to do the main quest, you don't want to do a side mission, can you just do whatever you want? Just go off into the to the uh, desert absolutely to yeah so there are some areas that Perfect. you will need to you will need to sort of yeah, you know punch through there's a big gate for example in the harbor wall and you'll need a special talon for your harpoon again the, the trademark avalanche harpoon sure. uh, to pull it down so there's a little bit of gating just to make sure that you don't just race to the finish line too quickly sure. but you can you can it's it's the avalanche promise, right? If you see it, you should be able to go there. Yeah, there's no backdrops, no level loading, nothing like that. Oh, just made a lot of people happy. Yeah, I am like Guaranteed. so psyched because that you that sold me. And if it was like, so I was gonna get it no matter what. But if I if I learned that it was linear or like you know story based completely or whatever, I still would have been excited. But now I get to actually explore this world that I saw when I was seven. You know? yeah. That's really good news. So, Soma, how long would you wait for Mad Max? Like, what kind of release date would you, like, tolerate? Just out of curiosity. One week. Okay. I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. No, no. Uh, at the end of the year, maybe? I don't know. But, no. It, whenever it's ready, actually. I have, I have a copy in my back pocket here. Oh, oh. Wait, are, we, are you, you kidding? Still, you said go down the stage. I thought you had a code to give me. Oh, September uh, 1st. <laughs> wow. Oh, that's coming up. Is it really oh, September God. 1st? Yep. That Damn. is soon. That is just, like... I asked you earlier how long you guys have been in development. I was actually surprised. Can you, can you tell us? Yep. Three and a half years. Three, Three and, and a half years. years. So that's sick. That's cool. <laughs> <laughs> but, but yeah, I mean, that you can tell like a lot of love. Just looking at the game now, just like exploring the open wasteland. And, and just yeah, where, where does this take place in just like the timeline of Mad Max? Is this like after the last movie or? We, we are a little bit hazy on that. Oh, sure. Um, okay, understand. Yeah, but I, I think it's actually a precursor to... Uh, to the Fury Road. Oh, okay. Yeah. okay, okay. But really, if you look at uh, all of the films, um, Mad Max's journey is nearly always the same. It's totally insane at the start. Yeah. Um, maybe apart from the first one. Totally insane. He wants to just detach himself from humanity. Every time he gets close to someone, they get ripped away from him. Yeah. Tragically. Um, but 
in order to find peace, in order to escape, he always oh. has to make friends with somebody or, or make some sort of partnership. And that ultimately always ends in tragedy, in even more tragedy. And, it, you know, the whiplash back to teetering on insanity again. Just, you're, just dashing tragedy, a little bit more tragedy. Yeah. It's just, you're right about Max. Needs a little bit more tragedy. Let's, let's tear away someone else that he loves. Yeah. That's funny about Max because you're right. Max... He goes to these dark moments where he's all by himself for years, and then he, he finds people to hang out with for a little bit, and you can see he smiles, maybe. He hangs out with a little kid, and yeah. he's starting to get his humanity back, and then he's like, actually, screw that. And he just goes off back into the desert and forgets about it. Well, maybe I need to hang out with a little kid again and <laughs> throw a boomerang around or something like that. And then he like has this human moment. and yeah. That but what really, really, what really wrecks his head is the fact that it always seems to be his presence that brings on the doom on the people so it is though it's his tragedy follows yeah. him where he goes the action sequences follow it's his, <laughs> exactly it's where that, he goes the curse. action <laughs> sequences follow but that's the best way to put it but like just looking at the footage though like i mean you know you have an open world like this just like the vehicles just like the collisions the battle with other like you know like wasteland like villains it seems like so so satisfying <laughs> so this um Obviously, vehicle combat is sort of one of the, the, the innovations. It's one of our key tenets, uh, gameplay mechanics. But there's a whole bunch of weaponry that you can use when you're sitting in your magnum opus. You can customize it to look and feel. You know, you can add uh, defenses against certain types of vehicles. You can add upgrade the drivability and the stats. And you, you can't just max out everything because that would give you an undrivable car. So you have to figure out, okay, well, what are these upgrades affecting? Do I have more traction? Do I have less power? Is the, is the car too heavy because I put on a, like a kick-ass oh. ramming grill and so on. Oh. So you have to kind of decide, well, what vehicle do I want? Do I want a tank? It's just going to plow through everything. Right. Do I want something that's nimble, can, can survive over you know, rocky terrain and so on? And then there's a whole array of weaponry that you can use from within the Magnum Opus. In our demo today, we show you, obviously, Max's iconic shotgun. Right. But there's also, uh, he has a sniper rifle at the back. Um, yeah, Chum Bucket, his black finger mechanic, who's in the back of the, the magnum opus there that you can see now, he helps him by firing uh, a, a bunch of different weapons like the harpoon. He also mans uh, what we call the thunder poon, unfortunately. Chris, that uh, is awesome. <laughs> oh, yes. The, the harpoon basically firing a thunder stick, a big incendiary explosive device. It's almost like a, a heat seeking rocket launcher. There you see. Thunder poon? Yep. I love it. Hey, I got a question for you guys. So, if you guys were trying to survive in the apocalypse, what would be your weapon of choice? I want to, I'm throwing it out. I know it's left oh, field. Wow. I just want to know. Um, Curveball. That is. I think it would probably be a bottle opener. I mean, you know, get okay. thirsty. I guess. I mean, that's. that's you get one yeah, weapon. One the torture. Weapon. Imagine you found a bottle of beer in the wasteland and you, you couldn't open it. The torture. <laughs> what if? What if Max? He, Max is a badass. Though. He just. just Twist it off with his eye, wouldn't you? Yeah. yeah. I'd use a sock, I have sock full of sand. That's what <laughs> I Sock full of sand. I was yeah, there's like, sand everywhere. You can always reload whenever you need. I was about to say something impractical like a tank. I never have enough fuel to actually like drive the thing around. And once I'm out, I'm done anyway. You're completely right. The reason why I ask that is I want to know what Max's weapons are in the game. Can you maybe lay out, like, maybe every single gun that's going to be in the game? Good call. Like, yeah, maybe, I, like, a, like, a couple guns. No, he's like, right. We need all the weapons. I mean, it would be yeah. a great interview without it. But you got the... You got the sniper rifle, obviously his shotgun. You've also got uh, the vehicle has this harpoon which can launch thunder sticks. He can pick up any melee weapon that the enemies have, uh, including thunder sticks. Anything. They drop it, he can pick it up. They drop it, he picks it up. I love that. Oh, um, oh, he has shivs, small, like, kind of wasteland crafted knives that he uses to, to, for finishers and executions. Uh, he picks up uh, thunder sticks sometimes and he'll pick it up and then he'll jam it into the chest of the nearest war boy, kick him off. And then it explodes. It happens to be a gang there. They'll all explode in a fleshy mass of burn.
my apostles of Arthur. You've hunted well. His war boys are rabid animals. His reign is through terror and fear. His purpose is power and vengeance. And my road goes through him. <laughs>